So today I'm going to react to a video that was posted by Andrew Huberman. Dr. Huberman is, is a rare bridge between neuroscience and practical wellness. His ability to translate, you know, complex scientific research into clear and concise, actionable insights for average people really empowered, you know, a lot of people online. People tell, tell me, you know, often they say, you know, he's not just a scientist, he's a modern day guide for, you know, exploring human potential. Coach Stu McMillan, you know, he's a master in his craft. He has coached, I believe, 70 Olympian sprinters. 30 of them actually got medals. So he has a lot of accomplishment. Definitely mastered the art of coaching. When I watch him coaching Andrew Huberman, I can tell that, you know, he ha he put a lot of thoughts into his work. And, you know, his ability to combine, you know, biomechanics, intuition, and athlete psychology, I think is world-class. But what is interesting, which I will bring out, is from our unique fascia perspective of the understanding of sprinting and why, you know, I think Stu might have missed some of these critical areas and whether he did it deliberately or he just missed out because it was a show, I don't know. But I'll put my unfiltered thoughts into this. And you guys can, can tell me what you guys think. So a lot of the good stuffs here are talked about in the beginning. All right, first of all, we're not going to go for jog. Sprinters are not joggers. It's a very, very different gait pattern. That is true. You know, if you look at um, how the elite level athletes sprint, they are very different than joggers. But very importantly, if there are elite levels, for example, Usain Bolt, you ask him to run slow, he's still going to run on the forefoot. He's not going to do heel to toe, which Stu says in some of his podcasts, which is, you know, very different. We have a film of this. He's still on the ball of the foot and he's still bouncy. There's stiffness at the ankle, at the knee and the hip. And there's a systemic stiffness and they coordinate together to keep you tall and bouncy. Stiffness at, at the ankle, knee and hip keep you tall and bouncy. This is something we strongly agree, and we always talk about the stiffness of the ankle. If you're training for sprinting or going fast as a footballer or a basketballer, you should be focused on these type of things. When you jog, you kind of roll through your ankle, you roll through your knee, and you just kind of push your way around the track or push your way around the grass. If you're talking about average Joe, who do not have this unique fascial connection from the feet to the glutes, and their foot is degenerated, they don't have the proper fascial structure to support the weight around the ankle and it's segmented neurofascially from the foot to the glutes. Yes, they're going to heel strike. It's going to collapse. It's very different. You're saying bow jogging. You can see it's on the ball of the foot, even at slower speeds. This is a, a moment where you can see the gait of all three individuals. You have Stu, the guy on the left, and then Andrew. Now, as they are moving in space, because I'm trained in this, I could tell you Stu is the one that has the proper bomb mechanics. He's much more fascia driven than the other two. If I were to give, you know, one, two, three, I would say Stu is number one. The guy on the left is number two. And unfortunately, Andrew is number three in terms of ball mechanics. Well, the way I try to teach them how to impact the ground is to be as stiff as you can, as if you're hitting a heavy bag over and over and over again. It's pop, 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 pop. So when we're doing the skip now, I want you to be really stiff through the ankle. Stu, again, says some very truthful things about sprinting. Running is like hitting a heavy bag with a fist. But remember, the hands and the feet are right together, right? So if you are hitting like this, what did you just do with your hand? You actually grip, right? You have to put tension into your fist and then you can punch. And even if you're jabbing, if you're jabbing, you know, there's, there's in martial arts, there's the eye poke. You're not going to keep your wrist and finger relaxed and jab. You're going to keep your finger tension and jab. So all this is telling you what your foot should be doing. It should have fascial tension. You're not going to have a very floppy ankle and run. But unfortunately, that's what happens when you run, when you wear the shoe for too long. And also, if you are doing weightlifting, you're, when you're squatting, you have to dorsiflex, force dorsiflex your ankle. So that really makes your ankle loose over time. Stu knows that you have to have stiff ankles. We'll do an elbow push-up. So we're on our elbows here. We push up into a dolphin position. Don't rest on the ground. Squeeze, push up, and then push your scapulas away from 
the rib cage on the way up. This is a very good exercise, an elbow push up. And this really should be working, you know, the core, hip flexors, and toes, and some of the glutes and hamstring as well as a holistic unit. But if uh, someone who is less fascial driven, they might not necessarily feel the right area. They might feel quad or lower back getting involved. Now, if you train somebody like Huberman, he might not feel the benefit. Arm rotate under as we rotate and drop that shoulder down to that fist. You have the elbow, elbow extension. You also should be activating your core, hip flexor, and toes. So this is why we do the EMG study. You want to un understand in a given movement, do the elite level athlete use the same muscle groups as someone who's not elite? The answer is very different. Spine flexes, extends, <sighs> lateral reflexes, and rotates. And we're kind of doing all of the things here except for the uh, flexion. There is the torso rotation. Again, this is a very good exercise. You want to make sure all plane of motion are covered. A rotational movement is very good for the oblique to the glutes connection. What surprised me is the choice of footwear by Stuart. <laughs> that toe box is curved in the front. If we want to be sprinting properly, the shoe should be flat. It shouldn't be curved in the front. Curve in the front is if you foot what to hit on the ball, the foot, it kind of rocks your ankle. So it could create instability. If you're just resting, your toes will be raised in the dorsiflex position. You can't engage your big toe. We want the big toe to be pressed down. So that's against, you know, the, the hyperarch fascia training principles. This is about 50%. So that's your pace. And we'll go down to about where that garbage can is. We can see the footage here that Andrew was heel striking at 50% speed. But what actually surprises me the most is where Stu said, when you cut this, yeah. If they edit it from here, yeah. just down, yeah. money. You got that? <laughs> it's money from his waist down. He said it's money. But the biggest problem, I mean, if you're, it doesn't matter if you're, you're, you're entry level spring coach or if you're very good at biomechanics, you can tell Andrew wasn't doing it right. He's heel striking. That's the biggest problem. It's not money. This is not money here. I would never give this type of compliment. I will say, Andrew, you did a good job. However, you're heel striking. But he didn't notice it. I don't know if, if because it's the show or he just missed it. It's like, you know, you are a, a content, but you cannot balance a, a spreadsheet. <laughs> this is the most basic. You should be pointing out. Andrew was very happy. He said, no, no errors, no plasticity. But if somebody don't point out your error, you never learn. Now, Andrew here, he's clearly showing a degeneration in his fascial connection from the foot to the glutes. Also, there was a moment, Stu mentioned, this requires a little bit of balance. We normally do this barefoot, it's cold today, let's not, let's not bother. Can you connect your foot with the hip? There is a barefoot running component to making the body better, but because it's cold, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't do it. So that could be one of the reasons why Andrew didn't do the running properly. You cannot just let that go. That's a big, no, no, as a coach. I mean, imagine if I have you do an exercise that you think you're doing great, but really it doesn't do anything. That'll be wasting your time and your money. We'll be all the way down there. So half is here. You're going to hold that for three seconds. You're going to swing it up and you'll be in this position. You hold that for three seconds. Drinking bird position, which is actually a very good way to train the posterior chain. And we often use those type of exercises as well in our training. Very interestingly, Huberman says, yeah, not gripping with the planted foot yes. with the toes makes it takes the shaking mostly yes. away. And Stu quickly agrees. Exactly. This is against the hyper fascia training principles. Yes, sometimes when you don't grip the toes, you will have temporary balance. If you're activating your quad to balance your body, that doesn't really do anything to your athletic performance. The reason why you need to be making sure your toes are gripping and then toes are pressed down is to make sure your anterior tibial tendon is activating. And because he's wearing the shoe, there's no way for us to tell. When Stu agrees, I could tell he doesn't have too much experience in what the foot structure should be like, how much toe engagement there should be, things like that. You have to be running on the ball of the foot and on the toes. And this is the moment really, really makes me sad. Huberman runs with heel striking. Stu says he's really happy. That is a lot better than what... I I was thinking it might be. Okay. Like coming into the day, I said, all right, if, if I had that picture in my mind of what you were going to okay. be able to do, I'd be really happy. We're going to add the footage of before and after, how I corrected some of my students and how they run now. There's nobody that could run like Huberman, and I wouldn't say I'm happy. I'm not happy. This is not how you're supposed to be running sprinting. This is why we spent the last decade 
why we invested so much resource and time to learn about the fascia and the fascia's properties, the importance of foot and ankle, the importance of the fascial connection from the foot to the glute. I actually done my fascial dissection at Stanford and he he's a Stanford scientist. So I hope maybe in the future we can collaborate and maybe have a different way of running and feel the difference.